Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Yogendra Yadav, and I'm a PhD researcher at SDG Level Eleven Lab at School of Architecture at Polytechnic of Torino in Italy. And currently, I'm a visitor uh, for my research at uh, Grid UNSW with Professor CC. And in my presentation, I'm going to give you an overview the processes uh, we followed so far, and the progresses and the challenges we face uh, in the development of the Torino Digital Pin. And yeah. so this is uh, something that you can expect in the upcoming slides, starting with the what was the aim of the project, uh, how it was motivated, and it started with the data equation because it's the basic element, elementary uh, stage for development of a digital pin. The processing of the data sets, the, the products that we derived from the data equation phase, and what was uh, our aimed uh, use cases and the applications. And uh, I'll conclude with the challenges we faced so far in the, in the development of the digital twin for the city of Turin. So starting with the like how it was initiated for because it's a it's a live project with the municipality of the Torino. So uh, because all those all the metropolitan cities they are aiming to become a smart city. So in order to develop a smart city, uh, we need to focus on the planning, a smart planning with the digital tools. So the the motivation was to develop develop the city of Turin as a smart city. That's why we started with the we initiated the project of a Turino digital twin. And for us, uh, the understanding of the urban digital twin is more of a like three D model. The information attached from it, uh, be it coming from be it the dynamic information from the sensors and how to uh, changing uh, the three D model and the specific uh, rate of synchronization because otherwise it's, it's a static 3d model so the information is uh, changing the visualization or 3d models so for 3d models it comes from the sensors from the remote sensing sensors from photogrammetry from lidar and the measurements of, or the real time information from the iot sensors and to connect them uh, there should be a proper rate of synchronization sync up between the uh, real time measurements and the 3d model just to have the dynamic visualization and there, uh, this can be done in different ways so what what was the like the aim of the Torino digital pin project first one was to scatter the public administration the municipality and the decision uh, planners and uh, in the city with the digital to uh, tool uh, for the development of a smart city uh, for torino and next one is to extract the built environment features like buildings, road features, uh, like uh, for for like for, for the buildings can be the roofs, for the windows, for the analysis analysis, for the roads can be the road markings, the vertical signs for the autonomous driving, and there can be like multiple reasons. So, the initial target was to have a, like a general uh, digital pin which can be used for multiple range of applications. And the next one was because uh, things changes every six months or like uh, every year the real uh, the real time information or the measurements are obviously changing but the 3d model because some part of the city is uh, can be going under renovation or some part is being constructed so to keep the the city model of the torino updated over the time and uh, to facilitate facilitate the planners of the city and so uh, the initial domain of application of urban digital pins can be multiple but for us these uh, were the main focus first one is the energy the to to monitor the energy system for the city of torino to plan uh, to enhance the energy efficiency of the localities in the city with the energy analysis from the 3d pro, 3d city models and also environmental monitoring with the vegetation analysis green area analysis and mobility like uh, to uh, to provide the better transport uh, transportation accessibilities uh, in the cities and uh, manage uh, dynamic uh, traffic flows in the cities and to help with the planning uh, urban planners uh, to plan the like future infrastructure of the cities and also to help uh, cater the needs in the emergency management of uh, flood management and in terms of emergency response emergency responses so the first step was uh, data efficient with the sensors. Um, so we uh, the project was formulated in the initial months of 2022. 
तो द इनिशियल डेटा क्वेश्चन वाज कैरीड आउट विद दिस द हाइब्रिड लाइक लाइक अ सिटी मैपर टू सेंसर्स विद द कैमरा एंड लाइडर स्कैनर एंड फॉर टू टू कैप्चर ऑल द फीचर्स फ्रॉम द साइड पर्सपेक्टिव एंड द वर्टिकल पर्सपेक्टिव फॉर एवरी पोजिशन लाइक वन वर्टिकल इमेज एंड फोर ओब्लिक इमेज इज कैप्चर्ड just to just to have the just to capture the all the perspective of uh, all the features and this is uh, one of the uh, aerial image from the data equation phase for the city of turin and here is the visuals of the flight lines uh, from the data equation see you can see like the flight lines are so dense so so in order not to miss any feature uh, from or any building uh, from the city so the first time uh, okay like everything uh, we get from the sensors is in raw format so how to make them usable at the at the first stage so like for the processing of images uh, because every software uh, because all these solutions are commercial bit meta shape or pix 4d or leica or n frames are sure from isri uh, because and they uh, for the processing of images they work in a like basic fundamental way uh, with the bundle adjustment but the quality of the product is a uh, is a uh, some somewhat varies with all these uh, solid commercial solutions available and so we tried with all this to uh, derive the products from the photogrammetry so these are the four in uh, uh, products uh, from the in uh, detection phase from the photogrammetry we get like three point cloud dsm the ortho photo and the mesh similar from the lidar the process point cloud the dsm and the class classified point cloud and we also acquired the thermal images because thermal images can be really useful for the en energy analysis of the buildings and they can be the thermal point cloud they can be integrated in a pipeline for the beam so the beam is more um, more power in terms of the energetic parameters and the information just to because the next the the future is, goal is to also integrate the beam with the collected data sets and the next one was uh, we, it was not initially planned but we have to do it at later stage because from the aerial point uh, from the aerial point clouds the uh, the building facades and the and uh, the windows were not well modeled because the flight height was above 1 meter and even if like we tried to cover all the perspectives from the from the oblique and nadir and uh, but uh, the windows and facades were not well constructed even trying even after like trying out different solutions so we uh, collected the point cloud data with the ground based mobile mapping system with the lidar scanner and so so to have a like a integration of the mobile mapping system the ground based point cloud in the aerial based data sets so the question is do you have a comparison of results between four softwares on uh, we do have but uh, we haven't compiled in this slide so if you want to see the comparison you can ask us we can share the initial insights from us our side and uh, so this is the uh, one of the uh, derived products from the image processing which is the ortho photo and if you uh, uh, the area in focus is a saucer field and like even the smallest detail are quite preserved even the the markings on the saucer field and the like the person standing over there and the number of poles so even this small information can be derived from the ortho photos uh, processed and next was the drive product is 3d mesh uh, this is from the locality near the central part of torino and you see the uh, like from from a bigger perspective or like a um, far over far perspective like a uh, roofs and uh, roofs windows and everything is uh, well modeled in a mesh but the problem with mesh is uh, it doesn't have any semantics so we don't know which one is roof which one is a uh, building so it's of no use how to go ahead like uh, so this is also one of the challenge that i'm also facing with my research like uh, how to if, if i go with a point cloud point cloud is a uh, okay there are there are some different solutions available for like uh, taking out the feature and doing the different analysis but then they should be connected somehow so and these are the visuals from from the 3d mesh the 3d photogrammetry mesh from the city of torino uh, yeah if, if uh, the if the this thing can be figured out if the mesh 
or the three model has the semantics then the analysis can be really easy and more fruitful but the uh, the another thing can be used to can be uh, done to use the uh, model using the city gmail but that has to be done manually and if uh, we talk at the city scale or the larger scale provided Turino is the third largest city in Italy so if we do it manually for every building or every locality it's going to take years so we are still uh, still looking for the solutions to somehow figure out how we can uh, assign the semantics to the point uh, to the model that we have so in order to start up the things we started with the one test site this is the school of architecture where the sdz11 lab is also located in one of the north things so we started uh, with just sm small part of the city so the first thing the first attempt was to use the product from the photogrammetry to integrate the data from photog photogrammetry and the ladder scanner because from the photogrammetry we, we have the texture information and from the ladder we have the geometrical information so in order to make the dual advantage of the integrated product uh we because uh, lidar can be better in terms of the the occlusions or where the where uh, the uh, parts and the features cannot be reconstructed with the photogrammetry so we use the the basic uh, basic uh, when, uh, basic process in the cloud compare point to point alignment for this integration just to make the dual uh, advantage of the integrated product so okay uh, now comes like we have the we did the data acquisition we did the processing but for what uh, so there has to be something fruitful out of uh, out of it so our for the and the, there should be some in, information which can be derived from the products so first one was to uh, to get the, some information on the features or the characteristics of the built, built environment about the buildings about the roads and next one about environmental data and the land use and also focused on the road system and the road markings for multiple applications so these were the like so far area of focuses and our attempt was also to integrate the products that we have with the other database because here you see from the city gmail it's just almost a lod2 and it doesn't have the specific roof stop it's just the extrusion from the uh, extrusion of the heights so if we can somehow uh, integrate uh, the the roofs with this model uh, think uh, the it can be used in a better way and this was all, also one of the interest from the municipality to to do analysis of the green areas and uh, access, uh, accessibility of the green areas to the citizen in the city of uh, torino uh, but if you see the standard like city gml model it's just a uh, uh, every tree feature is just a, like a simple straight extrusion and we don't have any idea of uh, how much is the crown height, how much is the radius, how much is the coverage of the entire tree. And this has to be also taken into consideration. So here the 3D plays an important role. And also for environmental monitoring, so to, to classify uh, the land use from the products that we have, uh, this was also one of the use cases that we made uh, for the city. And the next thing, next use case was uh, to segmentation of the road markings and the horizontal signs uh, to make a test on the autonomous driving because the algorithms for autonomous driving, they make use of the markings on the road, the pedestrian, the center line markings and the crossings. So that's uh, because um, in this way, the algorithm will get to know where to make the turn, where to stop and how to follow the road trajectory. And and with this, the analysis can be focused on like uh, if the markings are well, like distinguishable or can be can be uh, figured out or not. And next one was um, to uh, automate the segmentation of the road signs and the road furniture, the street furniture um, on the streets. So we use the ortho photos and in using this mapillary solution it's an open source which can be used uh, to uh, to fetch out the vertical signs and yeah it can be used also for multiple applications so the next step was because uh, the data has to be shared uh, to different stakeholders and planners 
in some very simplistic way because it's really hard to train people for like uh, point to tell them about point clouds for, for about the different senders and uh, to transfer that the bulky data sets so this one will be made the attempt to uh, share the data using the cesium but the uh, it comes it also has a limitation on the um, free version so you cannot share more than 4 gigabytes so we made uh, another attempt with the map stroke it's another solution to share the data sets uh, with the different stakeholders for analysis and for different for basic visualization and the measurements so now comes the challenges uh, that we face so far although we are still in the initial development phase for the city of torino so the first thing is that uh, for the processing of the data sets there are different solutions available but which software to choose uh, and uh, there are there, there's always trade off between the quality the cost of it and the processing time so there is no fixed fix standard like okay this software you can like uh, definitely go with for the processing of the images and next is uh, to many um, it's not easy to like manage the larger volume of data sets and to share it with the, the other people because for the Torino we have over 25000 images and uh, the terabytes of the lidar data and the same goes with the mobile mapping data and uh, also with the uh, thermal data sets so this is also uh, a challenge and another one comes in terms of computational power because even the power a powerful workstation can um, will will face uh, difficulties in processing the thousands of images so there has to be a very powerful on uh, online cl cloud platform to process those data sets and it always comes with the cost and now if we have the 3d model and we have the information from the sensor the challenge also comes how we connect it and how we ensure the the synchronization or the update between the information and the model. So theoretically, uh, we can find different, okay, this thing works in this way, this thing works in this way, but to practically implement, uh, it also faces challenges. And sometimes uh, things works, like if we have to de develop a prototype digital twin just for one building, one structure, then it goes, uh, it can like work, but then we have to scale it up for a like bigger, like a, like a metro metropolitan cities, then the things are, things might not be the same. Uh, in terms of semantics, we uh, we also face challenges because uh, initially the uh, we were um, uh, looking for the windows and the facade features, but in aerial data we couldn't uh, find them like a very well model or reconstructed, and uh, at several places of occlusion the features were not very well constructed. So and and as I earlier mentioned, uh, the next challenge comes in the update of the digital twin. Uh, the okay the information can be updated but the 3d model the basis has to be also kept kept on updated with the time with the changes in the city so for this uh there can be different approaches using the crowdsource image images or crowdsource data from the citizens or from from social media images because it's not feasible to fly the aircraft or make the data acquisition like every six months or every year because uh, it has to it comes at a at a bigger cost and some regulations and the same the same thing that we that it, it takes like months to get back and how to put the updated data with the existing model it also has challenges and the third the the most important in, uh, like um, the biggest challenge is how to assign semantics to the process data and like um, if we go with the city gml models it has to be done manually one by one so that's not possible for the whole city uh, and uh, if we go with the point clouds or the 3D mesh, like uh, how do we go? If we classify the point clouds and then we convert into it into a mesh, then I, uh, we haven't made this test, but uh, it's not very very clear that how it will work if the feature classes will be transferred to the mesh or not. And I would also like to acknowledge this uh, is the this uh, Torino Digital Twin uh, project is a part of uh, Project Nodes and it has received the funding with this grant agreement number and it's a live project with the municipality of the Torino. And at the end, uh, I would also like you to take you through this um, uh, interesting adventure, like a ISPRS Student Consortium. 
So basically, uh, for those who don't know, um, all of those who don't know about ISPRS, it's an international society for photogrammetry remote sensing, and it's the it's the group of the like a uh, people working in the field of geospatial science, uh, photogrammetry and remote sensing to help uh, in the better decision making processes and uh, how the geospatial science can uh, lead to the like better developments of the future. And we at, uh, because I'm also one of the board of directors at ISPRS Student Consortium. So we are six people from across the world, which takes case of the different uh, parts. So for me, I take care part of the website, uh, how to send, uh, how to update the website with different events coming up and how to maintain the database people uh, of the people registering. So we are six people and we maintain the things. And we are the official representation of the youth and young researcher to the ISPRS, which is the main umbrella. And anyone who is under the age of 35 can register with us and be on the emailing list. Uh, every time we organize uh, some online webinars or some summer schools or in uh, some events for the youth in collaboration with the ISPRS events, like at the Jewish Special Week in Cairo, we organize a youth forum where we were like, it was a technical session where the contribution were ex uh, accepted from the young, young researchers under the age of 35. And we also have a quarterly newsletter and and fortunately next newsletter will be focused on the urban digital twins um, by the end, uh, by the end, end of next month. And the registration is complimentary. You don't have to pay anything at the end of every year. You can renew it. And for the registration, uh, you can just uh, take the photo of this or take a screenshot and you will just, uh, and that's it from my side. And thank you so much for your kind attention. And have a good day. And if there are any questions. Yeah. Yes, from the audience. My question was, what were the what was the challenges of working with the integration of area and facilities? Uh, uh, like because they are from different sensors and so they don't have to uh, align perfectly over each other so the, even in the best possible scenario there will be some misalignment of some millimeters so for us like uh, the main purpose was to to get roof on the from the ground based uh, point cloud to the aerial point cloud because in the aerial point cloud we don't have much points on the windows and the facades so um, long story short like uh, to densify the facades and windows was the main uh, and in this case the misalignment of uh, like uh, let's say like uh, if these are two point clouds and if they are misaligned by like let's say millimeters uh, it doesn't, doesn't make much difference because okay this is the surface and uh, okay we see how it goes Uh, just a, a comment from uh, Rob Peters, he thanks you and it's good to see a lot of people under 60 years old working on this stuff and thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, thank you very yeah. much again.